Okay, now we're going to get into my sequel headaches, aka when my sequel just doesn't perform how we need it to. In these two databases, so I've got RDS on the left hand side, RDS for my sequel. It's $730 a month with a 250 gigabyte disk. High availability is also enabled, and we're looking at 4V CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM. On the right hand side, we're using Single Store's managed service. It's $230 cheaper, $500 a month, 250 disk, highly available, and it only has two vCPUs, and then it has half the RAM at 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this comparison on the managed side of things isn't really the same as if you were running your own hardware yourself and self-hosting, because then you could actually do a comparison where the, the spec matches. But we're not going to do that. We're going to match it here. We're spending nearly 50% more on RDS for MySQL, and we're going to see how they perform. In both the databases and the transactions table, you can see I can run the count. And, and interestingly, straight away, notice over here, 404 milliseconds to run a count. Over here, 59 milliseconds. So already we're seeing where it's going to perform faster. In the transactions table, I've created an index here too. Now, this one's quite interesting because this index has been built for this query. If you were going to introduce additional columns and you know, support more complexity, you'd need to introduce an index for every single column and it would just become a bit of a headache. But to keep it completely fair, I've created an index here and I have sneakily paused the video because if you saw before in the video, there was a key on the vendor which is going to make single store perform much faster. I'm trying to show you indexed MySQL versus single store with no optimization. So I'm now just going to run these queries and go side by side. Oh, let's fix this. And this. And so the first time single store runs the query, it's going to take a bit longer because it does something called query plan, uh, query planning. And that basically says, okay, we haven't seen this query before. How can we convert this into the most efficient way possible of running it basically. And so when you have subsequent runs, it's now going to be, you know, 932. And again, this is network latency to 923. So it's going to run faster after the query plan caching, even if you change the values around. It's really just about how the query structured. And over here, MySQL took 7.3 seconds on the first run. Let's give it a refresh. And so, yeah, three seconds on the second run. And this is on 9 million rows, and we have actually added an index to MySQL. If we look at the single store table, as I said, I paused the video to fix this. There's no uh, shard key. If we'd have added a shard key of vendor, then we would get much faster performance with the group by that we're doing. But we're not going to do that. Okay, so that was the aggregation side of things. I now want to get into updates on tables. So we're just going to duplicate transactions. We're going to clone it. We will call it transactions underscore update and we'll clone the content. I'm going to do the same over here onto transactions, click clone, duplicate content. Now I'm going to commit the queries. So save and save. Oh, my mistake. I'm going to clone it to transactions update single store is already done we're now going to see how long it takes in my sequel i'm just going to pause the video on this and i'll let you know how long it took okay so we're back that took one minute 46 seconds i mean that was going to take a bit longer because in the transactions table in my sequel you do have the primary key and the vendor and amount index to copy whereas over here you don't i mean you have the the, the sort key here but it's just not the same Anyway, that's still a ridiculous amount of time, but let's get on to our next piece. We're going to update the transactions update table, and we're just going to set the vendor as testing, right? And a use case for this in the real world would be, imagine Fathom Analytics. It's got the page views table. Each page view is tied to a site ID. If someone said to us, hey, can you move 100 million page views to my new website because I want to merge these sites together, then we just run an update and wherever they have a site ID of the old site, we set it to the new site. 
So this is a real, a real use case. I'm going to uh, run them side by side. Let's hit start on single store, run and run here. Okay, so single store is done in 3.3 seconds. As you can see down here, 9.4 uh, million rows have had their vendor set to testing. I'm going to have to pause the video whilst we wait on my sequel. Okay, so that took 193 seconds. Let's uh, let's run this again. I mean, like, MySQL had to update an index as well, but still, 3.3 seconds versus 193 seconds. Let's run it again on single store. And let's see how long it takes. An OLAP database, so it took 2.5 seconds. OLAP databases aren't supposed to be able to handle updates across 9.4 million rows. A lot of the time you'll have a pend only or you'll have to do some kind of magical workaround to make it work. And again, if we come over to MySQL, I run the query. I mean, I'm not going to, to waste anyone's time. It's just going to be really slow again. Let's go to our transactions table. Okay, wonderful. Now imagine there was a world in which we like, imagine we had something like, oh, we want to add an order ID to the table. Or an order reference, let's say. And imagine it's just a varchar. And it's nullable, yes. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to add that column in. We're going to come over here and add it to order ref varchar255. And is it nullable? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, so that added the, added the column really fast. Now we're going to do this. And now order ref would not match the vendor, but for, for our testing, I'm just going to do this. Just to give it values in every single row. So my SQL over here, I'm going to run this. And I'm going to run it in single store. So it's touching 9.4 million rows. And so in single store, it's 5.9 seconds. It's just taken to update 9.4 million rows. And if you come in here, you look at the data, the order ref will now have the same value as the vendor. So my sequel is currently at 22 seconds. I'm just going to pause the video and I'll unpause it when it's complete. Okay, so that took nearly three minutes, 170 seconds. And you're kind of getting the picture, but I really want to drill this home because this is really important. Now we want to add an index. So imagine I'm going to do select all from transactions where order ref equals, and let's just find a random one. We'll just grab this one. And we've obviously got some duplicates, that's fine. We wouldn't have duplicates in a real application in this scenario. Now I'm gonna come over here and run that same query. Okay, so 67, 67 milliseconds in single store. Okay, so 67 milliseconds in single store, 3.7 seconds in MySQL. There must be some kind of caching though, surely. No, it really is that slow. Okay, cool. So the next step is going to be going onto the table, into the structure, and we're going to get into indexes later, but I'm really just trying to show you a quick overview between MySQL and single store here. So I'm going to add an index and I'm going to add it on order ref. And the same thing over here, I'm going to add an index and it's going to be on order ref and it's going to be a hash index. Again, I will get into that later. We can have a hash index here too. So let's run it, let's add it on single store and let's add it on MySQL. Okay, so this is getting silly. Single store has added that index to order ref <laughs> in a few seconds so I can now come over here and I can actually run this query um, it's a similar similar performance there's no real gain in this scenario uh, on a bigger data set I'm sure you would get some significant performance improvements but um, honestly 69 60 milliseconds and the tricky thing here is we're also factoring in latency on the network because I'm connecting to the United States and there's going to be some latency there if we ran this benchmark on single store itself, I do believe it would be faster. 
Uh, meanwhile, over in my SQL land, we're still waiting for the index to be added. I'm going to pause the video and start a timer from this moment now. Okay, excellent. Well, it actually it only ran a few more seconds after I, I stopped the video. So now I come over and I run the query. And yeah, MySQL is doing pretty good. 103 milliseconds, uh, 60 milliseconds over here. Again, network latency, so it's a bit, you know, odd. But we're now, we've now had something come in, right, from a client or from a boss. And they say, oh, we're not actually going to do the order ref anymore. We're going to go a different route. Perhaps we're going to have the order as a separate orders table. So now we've got to actually remove this data from our database. So I'm just going to get rid of these indexes that I just created. I'm going to save this and save on my SQL as well. Single store, and they both go really quickly. Wonderful. I'm now going to remove the columns. So let's save on single store. Let's save on my SQL. Okay, so single store's done. My SQL, I'm going to have to pause the video again. I am sorry. I'll set a timer. Okay, we're now done on the MySQL side, so it took 1 minute 14 seconds. So, you know, when you're doing the migrations in single store, they're just going to be so much faster than in MySQL. And you can actually have the confidence to do things like add indexes to a 10 billion row table and that sort of thing. So a few other things that I want to cover, final thoughts on MySQL versus single store. You've obviously just seen how slow updates are, deletes are, pretty much like single store outperforms MySQL in every single way possible. In addition to that, MySQL is running in RDS on a single box. There's nothing, uh, it's not horizontally scalable. It's, it's just, if you're going to horizontally scale it, you're still stuck with MySQL. Whereas single store, you can actually scale horizontally and introduce multiple nodes and it's just so much better. You've seen doing the up uh, the updates to the schema itself, they're just slow. But when you actually want to update the software itself, if we're comparing RDS, you're pretty much left by yourself. You have to make sure you have that multi-AZ uh, enabled or, or redreplica, whatever it is, to run the updates so that you don't get taken offline. Well, comparatively, single stores managed service, they work with you to do the upgrade upgrades. They um, The minor updates will be just done on a schedule but when you have major upgrades you actually schedule it in with their team around a time that suits you so very very different upgrade experience even if you're self-hosting the upgrade experience is still going to be much better uh, scaling out single store to petabytes to just ridiculous size clusters is just easy it's made to just keep on adding servers and servers and servers and they've done this trillion per second benchmark and it's just ridiculous. So you're never going to outgrow single store. Uh, data compression on single store is much better than MySQL. Uh, so you're going to get better use of disk space. And uh, as we go through the course, you'll see other ways that single store can shine. And finally, in this video, you'll notice one thing. I haven't even started to optimize single store yet. 